welcome back to another review folks. Today we're reviewing on set 75319 from LEGO Star Wars known as the Armorer's Mandalorian Forge that was first released in 2021, has 258 pieces, 3 figures, and retailed for $29.99 USD and $54.90 SGD. And now without further ado, let's move on to the minifigures. In this set, there are 3 figures including the likes of the Armorer, previous line the Jaren aka Mando. All 3 of them belong to an orthodox Mandalorian religious group known as the Children of the Watch. And of these 3 figures, I have to say, the Armorer looks the coolest with that spiky gold helmet. You don't really see that for Mandalorian, it kind of gives off a med medieval vibe to which, which I really love. And in that, how often do you actually see a Mandalorian who fights with like melee weaponry like hammer and a clam instead of blasters and rifles? Not that common I presume, and that's why she is awesome. Now onto the other figure, previous line looks pretty unique with an extra battle armor to represent his broad build similar to how they made Racker. And other than that, I do like how they actually used a Technic piece for his machine gun build as well. As for Mando, there isn't much to go through because he's practically the same as he always is in those previous Mandalorian sets, the same prints, helmets and even weaponry. The only difference is that he now has a jetpack instead of a cape. It makes a lot more sense since at the end of season 1, the armor actually gave him a jetpack. So yeah, it was actually in this specific kind of forge setup. Anyways, here's a look at the head pieces and back torsos of figures without the additional jetpack and armor. That'll be it for the minifigures. Let's move on to the set design. So for our set design, the first thing you'll probably see in this forge located in Navarro is probably the entrance with a Mythosaur sticker on it, a broom that keeps things tidy, and of course the different forging materials like this Mandalorian helmet with no prints and this roller blade piece. Next to the left of this, we have also this vault and some of the machineries that they use in this vault or in this forge. And yeah, if you open up the vault over here, the top compartment, there's actually a sticker showing like this armorer's clamps in it. And below it, you have some crates full of items like a blaster, some detonators and other materials as well. And further to the left, there's a machinery that features a holographic projection of the Mandalorian armor before crafting. There's a prince by the way, and of course the main machine that actually crafts the armor piece. And last towards the middle, we have the main forge area which is pretty movable as it is only attached by this nut over here. As you can see, it can kind of move up and down. And within this middle section, you also notice that there are four slots for the armor to put all of her equipment like hammers and such. And there are also four stickers representing the energy rings of the forge each on each side. And yeah, in the center, there are also eight flame pieces utilized to give it an authentic effect. With these eight pieces, a figure can basically hold on to the forging tray as such and kind of create your own scene where the armor was making the whistling birds, which is pretty cool. This is a featuring of the scene over here. And yeah, the final touch though is only really this movable Technic joint that allows you to pull the burner away when it's not in use. That makes it more realistic, which is definitely a plus point in my opinion. And with that, I'm done with my set design. So let's look into the final verdict. The final verdict, in terms of price, I'm gonna have to be a bit harsh and say that this set is not worth that much just looking at its size and number of pieces. Don't get me wrong, this set and the figures look amazing, but $54 for this set just a little too steep. That's why we give it a 5 for price. Next for aesthetics, I actually quite like this set. It has a lot of references and similarities to a specific scene in the ending of season 1 even in season 3 as well, therefore it's perfect in terms of appearance. I think it deserves a 9 because of that in terms of aesthetics. And last for functionality, though I wish that you know there was more space for the figures to stand about, I feel that it actually fulfills its main duty as a forge. Even some of the movable parts and storage space for items like detonators are pretty commandable and commandable as well. And therefore I would give it a solid 7 in terms of functionality. As a result, this set will be considered B-grade in my opinion, and that'll be all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video so far, and if you do, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Toodles, and this is the way. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!